Today, I'm talking about LinkedIn photos. LinkedIn photos are an area of photography that I just kind of stumbled upon because I have a lot of friends who are in the business world and they'll ask me if I could take their LinkedIn photos and a lot of times I do it. It's a pretty easy thing to edit, but I just kind of wanted to make a video talking about how I specifically edit for LinkedIn. And you know, a lot of these principles can be applied to just about any single area of photography. And I just do want to stress that with a LinkedIn photo, you really don't want to do too much. You want to just make your subject look good, fix a few blemishes here or there, but Editing for LinkedIn really shouldn't be that hard. So without further ado, here is my LinkedIn photo edit. First, I'm gonna crop the image to get rid of any distractions. This doesn't have to be the final crop. It'll just give us a better idea of what we're working with. The first thing I like to do for almost any project is make adjustments to the tone curve. I do this by adding three equidistant points. Dragging the bottom point down and the top point up, we're going to get an S-curve. I tend to use an S-curve in almost every photo and video edit I do. I personally think it just looks the best. Now that the image has more contrast and color, I'm noticing that it looks a little bit too yellow, so I'm going to come up to the white balance and adjust the temperature a little bit to the blue side. This was a very subtle change, but I think that white balance adjustment helped a lot. I'm now looking at my hair, and I realize that a lot of detail has been lost in the shadows. Bringing the shadows up is going to help me get some of that hair detail back. That adjustment made the image too bright, so I'm gonna counter it by adjusting the highlights. As I move the highlights to the left, I'm keeping a very close eye on the skin tones. I continue to make minor adjustments to the highlights until the skin tones look absolutely perfect. I add a little bit of clarity to almost all of my images. It tends to add some very nice contrast and polish. I'm now gonna use the Spot Edit tool to fix some of my blemishes. For something like this, I find the heel brush works a little bit better, but feel free to experiment. Also, make sure your opacity is set to 100. You can play around with feather values, but I tend to keep it at zero. Now, click over each spot you want to remove. This can also be accessed by pressing Q on the keyboard. I find for simple adjustments like this, Lightroom is very smart, and they're going to give you the right point 99% of the time but if they don't, feel free to move it around. Finally, I have to remove that giant Under Armour logo on my chest. I adjust the brush size by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. Now I'm gonna use the adjustment brush to add some smoothing to my face. For smoothing out the skin, I typically set the clarity to negative 40 and the sharpness to 10. I find this is a good place to start. Now I brush the areas of the skin that I want to make smooth. This also adds a very subtle darkening effect, which I like. Upon zooming out, I think the skin looks a little too smooth. I don't think this would be appropriate for LinkedIn, so I'm going to dial back the settings by half, setting the clarity to negative 20 and the sharpness to 5. The skin smoothening is now a lot more subtle and natural. Next, we're going to whiten the teeth. Click on a new adjustment brush and set the exposure value to 0.4 and the saturation to negative 60. For teeth, I'm going to turn the auto mask on. Since we have the auto mask turned on, we can move fast and not have to worry about this brush affecting the gum line. Upon zooming out, that is way too bright. It's drawing my eye completely to the teeth. So just like before, I'm going to dial back the settings. Setting the exposure to 0.2 and the saturation to negative 30. I find that the teeth are even still too bright, so I'm just going to keep dialing back these settings. Now the teeth whitening is way more subtle. And this image is just about done.
Now that I've successfully edited this photo, the next step is to crop it, and I've made a completely separate video, which I'll put over here, which shows my exact process for cropping that works for all social media platforms, including LinkedIn, so I highly recommend checking out this video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.